Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to be watching through this 21 Pilots Playback Rig Tour rundown video. I have not seen this. I saw it teased on Instagram, so I'm excited to watch it with you and react in real time. Okay, so this is a video that Sweetwater did. I'll put the link to this in the description of the video. Um, let's dive in and start watching. I've seen none of this, so you're gonna see my reaction for the first time in real time. I think we need more of this, by the way, like playback rig rundowns. These are super cool. Hmm, I wonder if there's someone that could do it. Hi, I'm TJ Beechel, co-founder and lead TJ's technician. TJ's a cool dude. Next I've never met, met TJ in person. Today I'm here with but, one of my uh, clients, 21 Pilots, and I'm really excited to have dude. Sweetwater Sound with us. Uh, I've been using Sweetwater to supply equipment for the 21 Pilots tours and their studios for the past 10 years, See, and the rig here is no yeah. exception. Uh, today we're going to be breaking this rig down on a component level, and we're going to bring Coley Bolin, the playback engineer for 21 Pilots, to explain how we deploy this on stage and how Josh... It's interesting already. I'm seeing some RME interfaces. I'm seeing some Motu, I think, MIDI, which is interesting. They chose that over the iConnectivity stuff. Uh, it looks like they're, I'm guessing they're probably doing redundancy with the direct out um, Xbox, or not Xbox, that's the Matty version of that. So I'm assuming ARMY into direct out, and then they've got the, uh, is that the distribalizer, I think, for SMPT? And they have a SM8, uh, radio SW8, so that'll be interesting how they're using direct Stone, out versus radio stuff, pilots but, okay, Controls the rig okay. from his drum riser. Okay, so let's talk about what is playback and so what the do these playback rigs do. The rig, that's uh, cool. Specifically on this tour, with the 21 Pilots Tour, we have several parts of the show where there's full band or it's just Josh and Tyler on stage. Our playback rig at that point will cover the backing tracks that are necessary for a full production with only limited you know, band members on stage. If it's only Tyler and Josh, then we're gonna use backing tracks to fill in the other parts that aren't happening live in front of you. Uh, more importantly, what we're also doing with the playback rig is offering demo? cues, all of the count-ins and all of the information to help the artists go stage left, stage right, give them their positions yeah. and help them move along with their transitions so they don't have to try to remember things every single night. And then it's a great point, great reason, another great reason to use cues, time code inside which is of our cool. playback uh, session. Probably for and that simply time code is what is sent out to the LD, our lighting director, so his console can lock in for video. It's sent off to Pyro to make sure that all of the fire and concussions go off at a very strategic time, and it is also sent to camera cues so cameras can go off and pick nice. up the right moments Probably at the right time. Or something. Every rig is different. Uh, cool. Again, I've been with 21 Pilots for 10 years now, and this is probably the fourth rig and rendition that we've made for them. Every single band has a different rig for their needs, but conceptually the idea is that you have two computers running either backing Pandemic, tracks, yep. cues, time code, or general information, and then you have two of those computers running the same tracks at the same time. And what the system is doing is if it detects a failure, it flips it to the second computer. So there's no audible latency, there's no pops, there's no way of the crowd knowing that we had a failure in a mission critical application. Which is show. essential. All right, gotta let's break this rig down on a component rig. level. We've got two sources of power. We've got the Furman on top and the battery backup on the bottom. If we were to lose power, we have redundant power to every piece. So if we lose power, we're covered for 30 minutes to recover and figure out what went wrong. This is my favorite piece, the neat rack. It's just a rack blank. <laughs> Uh, let's go over the RMEs. RME is a company that we've had. RME has always been incredibly consistent, rock solid, and fantastic conversion. That's what a lot of folks, um, most people I know are using based, Matty. So we're not converting to analog that, yeah. on this specific rig. We do have other rigs that have the Ferrofish A32 on it to convert to analog if we're somewhere where we don't have a console or if we're doing TV broadcast. The RMEs are unique in a sense too that I can actually mult via multiple outputs. So we have 32 channels of playback, and then what I do is I send the second up to 64 channels, the second bank of 32 channels is then sent to the second switcher. So as we cover redundancy, just understand that this rig is dual redundant. The Mo2, this is just working in preset nine is a MIDI split. Anything that we have coming from Josh's SPDSX or anything from a control standpoint on stage, it is uh, Which, I mean, sent Motu's into the, the OG, Motu but and then spit out via every input. I would personally use So like anything that comes into that, the input is then split to multiple outputs. Or the MIDI solution and, um, stuff, which is that just allows us so we can have both simple, computers receiving cool. the same MIDI signal at the same well, time. is great. These two boxes here are uh, direct outputs, uh, Xbox BLDS, it's buffer loop detection system. Buffer loop detection system is basically pink noise, but it's an embedded code, a proprietary thing for the Xbox. If you're not familiar with uh, Xbox's products, it's the same thing as what you're seeing down here with the radial SW8, but instead of working in analog, we're using uh, MADI. Just like a play audio uh, Just do, do our Rivage console. I have the Xbox. We're using is all MADI digitally based. Uh, uh, and as I had already mentioned, we have two of them because- yeah, I have the direct out Xbox MD, which 
which is the Dante version of this, which also does MADI. But I think a lot of people use these guys for MADI because they have the GPIO input on the front to allow you to switch. With the Xbox MD, you have to either do it virtually uh, or do the automatic switching. So it looks like they're set up for main because switching, which is cool. Channels one through 32 get sent to primary box A, and mm -hmm. then the second channels 32 through 64 get sent to the second box. So if our switchers fail, the switches in itself is dually redundant. The That's SWA cool. is actually connected from a redundant standpoint for the distriplizers. Our time code oh, cool. uh, is sent off to our video walls, pyro, and cameras, and that is also embedded into our session. Below that... Which a cheaper way to do that would be to use a backtrack from radial, uh, but obviously it's not rack mountable, at least not with a really long tray or something. So that's probably why they chose the you Just SWA. simply have a rack shelf, and then again, we've already addressed uh, And let's talk about the distripalizer. That basically takes your signal, cleans it up, and helps it go long distances. You don't have to do that. Every time I've used LTC, I've never used a distripalizer, but for a show this big, you got the budget to do it. There's no reason why the, not to. The battery you know? backup. Um, let's go ahead and take you around back, and I'll show you what we've got going on behind the rig. The back Sweet. of the rack nice doesn't plate. have too much going cool. on, but I just wanted to give a shout out to Zane at Jumpers. Uh, Jumpers has been a great partner with us and 21 Pilots over the years. Every cable that we use on this tour on any rigs that I deploy comes from Jumpers, and we also do custom-made back panels. He basically takes all... You know, it's funny, Jumpers, this is the second time recently uh, I've heard Jumpers uh, mention, I think it was Josh Bales, the... Um, I, I had signed up for production online to see kind of how they do stuff and watched his auto-tune course and he mentioned jumpers for the, like the cable thing. So I'm gonna have to look into them. Actually, All I'm gonna make a note as we're watching everything this that we need and it customizes panels for us so we have a clean and easy setup every night. Yeah, and that's Hi, huge because you gotta set up. Uh, playback engineer for 21 Pilots. Uh, what we have here is two MacBook Pros running Ableton Live 11 suite. Um, running using dual suite for Max for Live. Um, we're yeah. using Strange Electronics uh, set list plugin for ease of you know change of set list from night to night. And also it's very streamlined with uh, different arrangements that we change throughout the tour. We're also sending time code out of uh, Ableton to sync lighting, visuals, and all that good stuff. I actually only hit play during the whole show three times. Josh, the drummer, he controls most of the show with a foot switch that's nice. plugged into an SPSX by Roland. And uh, he also has an iPad on stage that he mirrors playback from his world. Probably using so the mirror So I designed app. the session uh, with Josh uh, right before this tour. They used to use uh, session view, but we switched them over to arrangement view. Um, it's a lot easier to drop in you know, audio cues for them and different kind of clicks for them yeah. so that way they can stay in time with the tracks, as well as adjusting time code if that need, needs be adjusting levels of tracks. Uh, that's a great, uh, I forgot this guy's name, I'll have to go back to get it, but th that's such a great description of why arrangement view is better than session view in this environment for changes. If you wanna make a change, you add a queue and you don't have to bring your files back over, you do it, you just do it in real time. And if you're on a show like this and you're the playback tech, no artist on stage is gonna to wanna to wait for three minutes for you to move things over, they don't care. So arrangement view is a great choice for this. And yeah, also really he's running his drum samples in here. So nice. any drum samples that you hear him playing on like rolling pads or anything like that, they're coming from our world as well. That's cool. Yeah, so that's cool. So I love the oak board slide duo. I think they didn't mention that because Sweetwater doesn't sell it, but Coley, that's uh, the person saying that's doing this. Um, oak board slide duo triggering both of those, which is great. They have that AB switch that's going into the GPIO input on the um, the uh, Xbox BLDS, which is MADI redundancy. So we're basically um, going RMEs, um, you know, we got the two RMEs, computer A, computer B, that's going into this switcher. And uh, then TJ was mentioning they have the backup one, backup switcher, um, uh, which I think is important. It's a bit of overkill, but again, a tour like this, you don't want to cancel. I mean, look, they're filling a stadium full of people. Um, you don't want to cancel the show because you say, oh, sorry, our, our redundant interface went down, right? So that's the same reason why these shows that I just did in Nashville, I took two Play Audio 12s. Um, so I had dual redundancy, not because I expected one to go down, but because I had to make sure everything worked. So this is a cool setup. The RME, Maddie into the BLDS, uh, Xbox BLDS. 
and then Matty out of there into the console. Um, SWA, again, is using a switch uh, for LTC, which is coming out of the, the Distripalyzer. So RME into the Distripalyzer, I'm assuming, um, and then out of the Distripalyzer, analog into the SWA that then's going out to video world. Again, you could use a backtrack from radio to do that, but the SWA is a great solution because it's rack mountable, which I think is really, really good. So um, the back panel, I think, is killer to make it really super simple, uh, particularly these, let's see if we can find it. Um, Custom-made back panels. There we go. Uh, just to have your outputs easily accessible, there's our Maddie outputs. Maddie in, they're probably doing some auto-tune. Most likely, I'd have to look at the set. Um, I, I didn't see UAD stuff, but to get Maddie in, they're receiving something, some sort of audio to the system, which is cool. Uh, and then these guys, optical or whatever that is, um, that stuff is just super, and even just power, that's super nice in a setup like this where you're rolling in and out every night, different venue just to connect and go and not have to like, eh, give me a second to plug in and plug out. So TJ, great job on the rig. This was super fun. I enjoyed watching this. Again, I'll include the link to this video. Make sure to subscribe to Sweetwater's YouTube channel. I mean, they don't need your subscription as much as I need your subscription. So uh, they're at like 600,000 something. So uh, subscribe to them, but make sure you're also subscribing to me. I'll include a link to TJ's uh, company, Neat. Um, um, next era audio technologies i see it listed there but tj uh I, we've interacted at some point seems like a really cool dude never met him in person but uh, uh this is a great setup a great example of what you could do at a very big level but then take this and duplicate this in your setup instead of um the interfaces he has instead of doing maddie just get a play audio 12 and add redundancy and um get a backtrack to do redundancy for your time code output if you need an extra output whatever it is uh, uh, add some redundancy into your setup. Consider getting a, a back panel or front panel to make plugging in and, uh, uh, and, and tearing down every night a lot faster. A lot of things we can learn from this, I think that will improve our setups, whether you're playing giant stadiums, small venues, a, a church, whatever uh, venue and scenario you're running tracks in. So thanks for watching this. TJ Sweetwater, thanks for making this video. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel, enable the bell icon so you see when I go live. Thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next one. Take care everybody, bye.